The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 164. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Melinda Emerson, author of Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. Welcome, Melinda, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. I'm so excited to be here with you, Wade. (laughs) Thank you. But before we get started, before we take a deep dive into your book, will you take just a moment to introduce yourself? Tell us just a little bit about you personally. Sure. Well, I am Melinda Emerson, but my nickname is Small Biz Lady, and I'm very excited to talk to you today about my brand new book, which is the update of my very first book, which is a bestseller called Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, and it's a month-by-month guide to a business that works. And I wrote it really because I wanted people to benefit from all the hard-learned lessons I had learned in my years in business. I've been in business now 16 years, so I have been through the fire, the wind, and the rain way and I'm still here. I'm still standing and I'm still strong. And now my mission is to end small business failure. So I'm so excited to be here today to just talk to you about that. And, you know, my brand is the small business lady and how I reach over 3 million entrepreneurs a week online through my content and information and my blog, succeedisyourownboss.com and Twitter, where I host Small Biz Chat every single Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, where I answer people's small business questions. So if you don't remember anything about me, just Google small business lady and you'll find me. Excellent. And we'll put a lot of that in the show notes so that people can go back and reference that. Melinda and I were talking about before the show how much of the audience is actually mobile right now. So we will we will make it easy for them to uh, or give them an easy place to go visit to grab everything that you just talked about. But uh, Melinda, first off, thank you for sharing all that uh, about, uh, about your personal stuff. And, and now let's jump into your book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, which was actually just made available not that long ago, as of this recording, about three, four weeks ago, uh, January 2nd, 2015. And Melinda, we're going to move quickly but we're going to cover the top questions that our listener slash future reader would like to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months? Well, in 2005, um, I be, my former husband and I became pregnant with my son. And I went from being the worst workaholic you ever met in your whole life to being put on bed rest for six months pregnant with my son. And in that time, when you've got six months to think – you start thinking about all the expensive lessons you have had the opportunity to learn and all the mistakes that you made in business. And I'm a journalist by background and by training, and I have a degree from Virginia Tech. And I literally just started taking notes and writing down stuff that I wish somebody had given me better advice about. And then I got to the point where I said, you know what? I I need to pull this together in a document that would just help other people. And it wasn't even about, you know, getting rich, writing a book or, or even, you know, because we both know that doesn't really happen. And then also, too, it, it was really just about being a resource for people. I am a voracious reader and I have been ever since I first started my business in 1999. And literally, I wrote the book I had never read. I wrote the book I wish somebody had written all the way back in the day when I first started my business. And and that's really what made me write Become Your Own Boss in 12 months the first time. And now I'm so excited that, you know, it did so well that my publisher came back and said, hey, why don't you update that book? So it's been five years since the first edition came out and now we're out with the second edition and I'm just so proud of it because it is really complete and still extremely relevant to to entrepreneurs today. That's excellent. We're going to get into that more. You talk about relevant. Uh, This next question is going to help differentiate. Entrepreneurs have 100 plus books that come out a month on topics that they need to read, really probably 200 and 300 a month. So what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, I think there's a couple of things that makes my book different. And the first thing I would say is my Emerson planning system in my book. I actually developed a six-step system for people to transition from having a job to starting a business. And it really starts with you really need to develop a life plan before you ever develop a business plan because you need to figure out what you want and why you want it. And then you need to build a business that aligns with that. I see people too often start businesses that just aren't good businesses for them because they didn't think it all the way through. And so I talk first about life planning, which is very non-traditional in the business world. And then I talk about financial planning because look, the money to start your business is going to come from your right or your left pocket. You got to figure out where that money is going to come from and what you got to do to get there if you're not there today. 
I also talk about really evaluating your business based upon what skills you have and then what skills you need to run your particular kind of business. In this section of the book, I really focus on having you go out and work for a business like the one you want to start. I don't want you to start a restaurant because you like to eat. I want you to start a restaurant because you know how to run a restaurant. Um, And so it's really about skill building and, and really being honest with yourself about what you will and won't do. And then I walk people through looking at their finance, excuse me, their marketing plan. And the reason why is because I see so many people who focus on their logo, their location, Mm -hmm. the invitations to their grand opening event. And if you ask them at gunpoint, who is their paying customer, they cannot tell you. So I go deep in on marketing to make sure that people understand that you have to niche to get rich as a small business owner. Nobody wants to hire a journalist consultant to do anything. And you really... Really need to figure out how be- how to become the cardiologist for your industry because we all know that cardiologists make a heck of a lot more money than primary care physicians. So it's really about understanding, um, you know, who that paying customer is and being really detailed and focused on that specific customer. And then I'd walk people through developing a business plan. You know, there's all these people out here now that want to tell people they don't need a business plan. That's ridiculous. You have to plan for success. Success will not just happen to you. And you don't want to spend more time planning your vacation than you do how you're going to build your a business that's going to support you and your family financially. So you really do need a business plan. Does it have to be 40, 50 pages? No, but it does need to be thought out and thought through so that you understand what's going to happen when the phone rings and somebody places in order. And then lastly, in the Emerson planning system, I really talk about launching your business while you're still working. You know, it takes 12 to 18 months for a small business to break even, let alone replace somebody's corporate salary. So I believe in, you know, doing both jobs till it hurts, you know, until the second job is making real money. And that might take a while. You know, it could take 12 to 18 months just to break even, but it really could be 36 months before it's actually throwing off the kind of money that could pay you a salary. So you really got to be prepared to go the long haul and you need to be able to multitask so that you can prioritize your job and give all your extra time to your new business. So Melinda, how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this one they can jump in and out of as they need, you know, cherry picking information? Or did you really design it to be read from front to back? I actually designed it to be read twice. So let me tell you, you know, because I had the benefit of writing this book before, I can tell you how most people told me that they used it. Most people told me that they read it twice, that they read it first to see if they could actually do it, you know, because it literally is a 12 month countdown to start your business. So I tell, so the whole thing is, you know, 12 months before you start, 11 months before you start. 10 months before you start. That's how the chapters are broken down. And then each chapter actually gives a list of action items to reinforce the information in the chapter at the end of each chapter. So it really is bite-sized so that people don't get overwhelmed. I think that's people's biggest challenge. They think they got to run this big old business. You know, it's like, no, take one bite at a time. And that is how I broke it down to make it easy. Um, I also find that what people say is that when they read it the second time, they start actually doing the action items at the end of each chapter. Mm. So that is how people use Become Your Own Boss in 12 months. Perfect. So so this is a perfect segue into my favorite part of the inter, uh, the entire interview. And that's where I'm going to hand over the mic and really ask you to take the next uh, you know, five minutes. You've already given us kind of the background, the purpose behind the book, but you take the next five minutes and really lay out what what the reader, the future reader can expect to get out of your book. Well, I'm so excited to have this opportunity because, you know, it's rare that someone actually asked me to say, well, why did you write this book? What's in it? (laughs) So I'm so appreciative of that. Well, the first thing I walk people through is really thinking through, do you really want to be an entrepreneur? You know, I think there's a lot of people out here that have fantasies of grandeur about what it is to put your shingle out and say that you're open for business. So I talk, I walk you through, okay, you sure? Here's what you got to think about. And then I explain why 12 12 months because the most common question I'm asked is small business lady, why does it take 12 months to start a small business, right? So that is the most common question. So that is the second chapter in the book. So we can get that question off the table, right? And then I walk people through how to develop a life plan, how to construct their financial plan, how to start 
thinking like a business owner. Then we start looking at creating your business model and then lining up, you know, your lawyer and your accountant who are going to be probably the two most important business advisors you're going to have. Then we start talking about marketing and I get into your niche and really understanding what a niche is and how you figure out what your niche should be. And then we look at marketing one on one how to figure out who is going to buy your product or service. Then I walk people through developing a business plan. And then once we get through business planning, then I turn it around and say, okay, where are you really going to get this money from? So we look at, you know, getting your financing together and all the different options for funding a business. Then I also have a chapter in this book about how to develop a successful crowdfunding campaign. A lot of people think, oh, I'll just do crowdfunding. Well, let me tell you something. The average crowdfunding campaign only makes $10,000 and most people are not successful with crowdfunding. And it's because they don't start planning six to 12 months before they launch their crowdfunding campaign. So I give you the step-by-step and I even profile two businesses that did it really well in this chapter. Then I walk you through how to brand your business. And in that, I talk about how to develop your number one sales tool, your website. Your website is the thing that could be selling for you day and night. And so many people neglect it. I spent an entire chapter on how to develop a great website. Then I walk you through how to develop a content strategy. Because when you start thinking about building your brand, you got to think about how to build your brand online and offline. And when it comes to building your brand online, it's really about what I call a three-legged stool approach. You've got to have a great website. You've got to figure out what you're doing with social media. And then you've got to use email to follow up on all that. And I walk people through that in how to develop a content strategy. And absolutely, of course, I have a chapter on how to become a social media ninja. If you want to know how I built over 300,000 followers on Twitter and growing and a brand that is international, I break it down for you in my chapter, How to Become a Social Media Ninja. Then we talk about getting you ready six months before you start. I switch gears and start talking about how to cultivate the market, how to start telling people you're getting ready to open up your business. Then we go through setting up shop. And I've got some great checklists in here about if you're opening a retail business or online or what you're doing, all the things you have to have in place. Then we talk about employees and building your team and how to do that. Then we look at how to set up your customer service system because your processes and systems need to be set up before you open your doors because you need to have something to train your employees against. So I talk about that. Then we look at taking stock of everything. Is everything in place? Are you ready? Then the third you know, section of this book is called Go. And that's when... In chapter 22, we walk you through launching your business. How do you do that? How do you handle cash and and, and build a banking relationship? That's the next chapter in this section. Then how do you maintain your marketing? That's what people, you know, a lot of people are good at doing launch marketing, but how do you maintain your marketing? That is extremely important. Then I walk people through 10 things you must never forget in business. And I got to tell you, wait, this is the first chapter I ever wrote when I first wrote this book um, in the proposal format. And then I leave you with my final thoughts. And in my final thoughts, I really walk people through the things that I think they need to be doing and measuring in their business. It's not enough to start your business. You have to maintain your marketing and then you have to measure what's going on in your business. And a lot of that has to do with your finances. You cannot let your fear of math be the reason why you don't know what's going on in your business. And you've got to have that information by the 15th of the month so that you can use financial information to run your business. And that really is it. I walk you through Become Your Own Boss in 12 months and I have proof that it works. I have thousands of letters from people and emails and Facebook notes and Twitter notes from people telling me that my system works. And I knew that anyway, because I used it myself. I did not make up a system just for a book. I eat my own dog food and I used all this advice in the book. And I explained that one of the great features in this book 
I have two things called Emerson's Essentials and Emerson's Experience. And when you get to a pullout called Emerson's Experience, that's when I tell you a true story about how I learned this lesson the hard way. And I have to tell you, I'm not the hero at the end of every story in my book. I tell the truth about a bunch of dumb stuff I did too. And a lot of people told me that that's really what made this book very authentic and why they really use it as a resource to this day. And then they go back and brush up when they start struggling a little bit in their business. So I I'm very proud of the message that this book is giving to entrepreneurs and giving them hope and encouragement and a step-by-step guide to start a business that really works. Well, Linda, first off, you did a fantastic job of, of taking us through the book. I know that's not an easy thing uh, being maybe the first time that you've had to do it, but, um, and now I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to be kind of mean and ask you to even break it down a step further in this next question. That's if the reader can only take away one concept, principle, or action item, out of your entire book, everything you just took, you know, everything you just discussed in the last five minutes, uh, what would you want that to be? Niche to get rich. I think that the biggest problem that I see small business owners have is they chase anybody that they think has money as opposed to having a specific mm. niche target customer. There's two things all small business owners have, and that's limited time and limited resources. So you need to pick a marketing target that you can actually hit. So if there's any concept you take away from this book, please, please, please take away niche marketing. It is everything that you need to be successful in business these days. Excellent. So I might know the answer to this this next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And that's, do you have a favorite quote from your book? My guess, niche to get rich, but do you, (laughs) is that it? Actually, that's not it. Oh. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> My favorite quote from this book is, is almost on the very last page of the book. And that is, you never lose in business. Either you win or you learn. Mm. And that is my favorite quote from this book. That's excellent. Yeah, that, what, what a powerful, what a powerful quote. So Melinda, if there was only one book you could recommend based on the way that it's impacted your life, created a, a paradigm shift or a lifestyle shift, what book would you recommend? Ooh, that's tough. You know what? Probably the E Myth Revisited by mm-hmm. Michael Gerber. Excellent, excellent. We've had that one suggested several times. That seems to be a uh, one of the, the the newer favorites. So, Melinda, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also get more information on your book, Become Your Own Boss in Twelve Months? Well, absolutely. If you go to my website, succeedisyourownboss.com, I've got some great resources and tools and tips for you. You can download two free chapters of my book, and I even have a special eight-part special report series that leads you through some of the information in the book. So I've got it all there at succeedisyourownboss.com. You certainly can follow me at Small Biz Lady on Twitter and Facebook and join me every Wednesday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitter for a small biz chat where I answer people's live business questions every single week live on Twitter. And uh, that's it. I think that's it. I mean, you know, if you can't remember Melinda Emerson, you can always Google small biz lady. Absolutely. And Melinda, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your book with us. Oh, you're so very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Melinda or become your own boss in 12 months, visit the elpodcast.com and you can see the show notes. Also, if you'd like to win a copy of her book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, visit the elpodcast.com and become a VIP. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.